Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, out here for another gear review, and today I'm talking watches, this little guy right here, which is by Casio, it is their data bank watch. Go ahead and start with, this is probably one of the coolest watches. Honestly, on one hand, there is absolutely some kind of nostalgia involved in it, like it is a calculator watch, and for my own part, I definitely remember some cool kids in high school that had these. I never had one. I always sucked at math. I don't know if this would have helped me, but they were pretty cool. And then fast forward, well, actually still in that window of high school or me being in high school, my stepdad actually had one. Always wore a calculator watch and he'd always use it. He was a contractor as well as an architect and yeah, kind of cool. But this being the data bank, there's actually some really cool features and stuff built into this watch. So yeah, I'll show you some of those. Right here on kind of the main watch face, you have the day of the week up top, and then you of course have the time. I keep it set to a 24 hour clock, and then you have year, as well as the month and the day, today being February 14th. And down here, you, of course, you have all of your different buttons for using the calculator. And there is a illuminator on this, not that you'll be able to see it very well, out here in the middle of the day but over here we can actually press this and hold it to change things or down here we can scroll through the basically different settings so if i press it once it actually goes to data bank up top you can see that name scrolling across the top a son jada and below it would be his phone number which i'm not going to give you right this minute and then next we get to the calculator function so we press this top button we are oh sorry i guess we press this button rather bottom right and so that brings us to our calculator at which point you can press whatever you want down here let's say five times if i can press it there we go shows you the times up there otherwise multiplication division whatever up there and now whatever the number I want, I'm gonna say 3.06, I would not know that answer. And then equals, bam, 15.3, in case you were wondering. And then we can hit this, it'll clear it out. Again, on the calculator, if we press that again, this is actually really cool, it goes to exchange. So I actually have this exchange set up for, because I'm gonna go to Mexico very soon. So exchange rate is 0 0.06 to one. So one peso is 0 0.06 dollars. So if you go to buy something, you're like, oh, this costs, let's see, 58 pesos. How much is that? Bam, oh, you're like $3.48, like, I can manage that. So really easy to do that. And then of course, clear it out, punch it in. And if you hold this down there, it's showing me what the exchange rate is and you can set it up for whatever it is, wherever you are, and then hit it again, stays there. Or back to calculator. And then from there, uh, back there, go back to data bank calculator, here we have an alarm set for 6 a.m. And right here, have a stopwatch. And for the stopwatch down here, you can start it. And then you can stop it and press and hold top left to reset it. And then, all right, back to main screen, data bank, calculator, alarm, stopwatch. And you can actually set up daylight saving time also if you want. And bam, here we are back to now, or back to the main screen. So I will show you the data bank feature. So on the data bank screen, you basically go through until you get to a blank page. It'll hold, I wanna say 25 different, basically pages of data. And you can set it up different ways, whether you want it to be name and the number or number and name. But in order to input something, hold this top left button and now that little cursor is blinking and then you use this plus and that to go through 
and cycle through letters. So I'm going to actually enter something useful. So let me cycle through here, way at the end of the alphabet. And if you end up going past the actual letter that you want, go back here, press that, and it'll take you back one. And then when you're ready to move forward, bottom right, go to the next, and go to that next letter that you want. And if you go forward and then you realize you need to change something like I just did, you can actually go back and then you can make your correction. And then once you've put on all your characters, I think you can put in up to eight up here at the top of the name. Then you basically keep scrolling and eventually it'll drop you down here where you can go ahead and input your numbers. And once you're there, you can actually use the number pad. So let's see, two, one, zero. And you can put dashes in if you want, or you can use that same space to actually put another character. I will put a dash in. So right there, I have finished putting in what I want to put in. And if you're unfamiliar, USAA, they basically do insurance and a fair number. So I hit this top button and it's now there. And whenever you're on this in the data bank, it'll scroll across the top to tell you whose number it is. In this case, USAA. And then I can press this, get out of there, back to that main screen. Honestly, I think this is hands down probably one of the coolest watches for just that, that data bank. Not to mention the other features to include the exchange rate if you're traveling. And where does this come into play? Most certainly in traveling. Like I said, being able to have that exchange rate right there, easily calculated, really handy, especially if you're somewhere with like a really bizarre exchange rate. And it's a cool watch like that data bank feature and you're like oh cool like you can put stuff in yeah you can put stuff in it. you can put all kinds of stuff in it to include obviously names and numbers it's one of those things where well where is that handy most certainly handy traveling or even just around town because big picture if you lose your phone how many numbers do you know by heart one maybe two like most people don't commit numbers to memory anymore. Just that's not kind of the world we live in. Like you have a smartphone and everything's there. This is basically a backup to that should you end up losing your phone, especially traveling where there can most certainly be consequences, being able to have those numbers to get a hold of important people. But beyond that, again, it's just characters for that data bank, which can be pretty neat depending on what you're looking to do. As I explained, it's great. You can put names and numbers in there, but it's also just data, characters. So 25 different blocks of 20 plus characters. You could basically run around with like your Bitcoin in your watch. You can't necessarily secure your watch. So if someone had your watch and they knew what they were looking at, they would probably have that. So you'd want your own form of encryption, i.e. off by like, four characters, this or that, whatever your encryption is. But fact being, you can put anything you want in here, whether it is just, again, just blocks of data, as simple as names and numbers, or something to include crypto, passwords, whatever you want it to be, which I think is pretty neat. And the practical aspect, again, is as people are more and more reliant on technology, and then occasionally when it breaks and they're like, ah, uh, what do I do? Being able to have all that stuff stored, especially think traveling to another country and traveling to another country. I understand the idea of having a Rolex. One, so you can flex on people, but two, if you're actually traveling anywhere to include impoverished places, you might put it in your pocket, but ultimately having that Rolex, 
it's an exchange of value. So everyone in the world knows what a Rolex is, even in the middle of Africa. If you needed to part with that in order to get access to something or get yourself moved out of a place, it's a bartering chip. This is not that. This will also probably not get you robbed, which also a bonus, I would say. And yeah, all together it's a pretty rad watch. Something else worth mentioning is being active. I actually really appreciate how low of a profile the watch itself is. And so in movement, to include just putting layers on and stuff, it's not bulky, it doesn't stand up, and it's actually really lightweight. Whereas if you have like steel bodied watches, they are heavy and usually they're fairly thick. They'll get caught on clothing and things along those lines. This, you put it on. Oftentimes I would take my watch off working out, depending on the watch. This one, very easily leave it on like I forget it's there, which is pretty handy. Is it a smart watch? No, which is great because it has a 10 year battery and you don't have to charge it every day. But how is it gonna tell me my steps? You can look in the mirror and know if you need to do more steps. Sorry, not sorry, but it's kind of funny. Honestly, yeah, it's not a smart watch, but it is at the same time and that stores data, which is pretty cool. Overall though, really pleased with this thing. And I will say, which this has got scratched up because right. I wear it everywhere. Ready still to totally usable, again. but definitely a little bit of a scratch on the screen here. It is apparently depth rated, depth rated to 50 meters. I probably wouldn't celebrate that and take it diving that deep, but depth rated. Like I mentioned, a 10 year battery life. It has a, I wanna say a Japanese quartz movement that occasionally you actually need to adjust because there's a tiny fluctuation there. And Casio, at least these, I believe now are made in China. And if you actually need these in a different language, there's other languages in here. You can program it to your language. Should you speak something other than English? Like I said, pretty rad watch and really affordable. You can get them on Amazon. I think the most I've seen them is about 60 bucks. And as of filming this, they're on there for like a little over 30 bucks, which, eh, like I said, pretty cool watch. Not to mention for kids. Why? Well, a couple reasons. One, not a huge investment and pretty easy for a kid to operate. And even if they aren't at the point where they have their own phone, or frankly, even if they have their own phone, being able to actually have numbers as a backup in here so that they can get a hold of you should they lose their phone, or again, if they don't have their phone, as great as it is for your kids to memorize your phone number, which I would encourage you to have them do. They can also have other numbers, maybe more than they would otherwise memorize in here, which can be handy, but overall pretty rad watch. There'll be a link down below if you want to check it out. But yeah, as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Black, white,